Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better at veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv. So I-V-D-I, International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash inv, and we'll get you the information that you need. So uh, first question uh, is from Mandy. Uh, she said, uh, case 13, uh, in cases like a boxer with gingival hyperplasia, I've always just removed the tissue with cautery, but never extracted the underlying teeth if there was no evidence of pathology. So um, let, me, let me approach that part of the question first. Uh, what I wanted you to get out of that case was you just don't go in there and see the hyperplasia and then start to remove it with whatever method that you want to remove it with. And there are many, uh, and some of you uh, mentioned cautery. Uh, some of you obviously are using uh, the electrosurgical units, uh, scalpel, the burr that we use with the scalpel, the, the uh, uh, 12 fluted burr, all those are fine, but you do not want to go in there and start doing that until you take radiographs and eliminate the possibility of pathology associated with that periodontal tissue. So if you have significant bone loss, just like you would in any, any perio case, that area uh, needs to be flapped. It needs to be, uh, the teeth need to be extracted, and then the tissue needs to be contoured such that you can close it, and that usually uh, uh, involves removing a, a lot of that productive proliferative tissue to make a nice smooth margin so that you can suture that to the palate or you can suture it to the lingual mucosa. So I hope that clears that up. That was, that was a, a resounding question that everybody had. Why, you know, why would we extract teeth with gingival hyperplasia? That's uh, the reason why we don't just go in and start excising tissue. We need to treat this like any other case that we see with full mouth radiographs first uh, before anything. Uh, even if this is not a case where you've got hyperplasia existing over all of the teeth, you still want to take full mouth radiographs just like you would in any other case. The other thing that I want to point out, any brachycephalic is a very difficult extraction. So these are complicated by the fact that they, they do have a lot of proliferative tissue and so that they're not your run-of-the-mill surgical extraction flap exposure. They're, they're a little bit more involved. Plus, since it's a brachycephalic, and it's a big brachycephalic in most cases with the boxers, you've got all of that dense cortical bone that gets denser the more apical you go. So it makes these very difficult. Unless you are really skilled at surgical extractions in other patients, I would strongly recommend that you refer these. Uh, and, and if you're not strong in surgical extractions and have had a lot of, uh, of uh, experience and skill, I would also strongly consider referring brachycephalics in general. Uh, we had a question, I think, in uh, may have been in the workshop, uh, but I think it was in the academy, about extracting, oh, actually it was a live text that I got this week, about extracting a tooth that was partially ankylosed in an 11-year-old brachycephalic dog, uh, and it was a mandibular canine. And those, you, even if you are well-versed and comfortable doing mandibular canine extractions, that would not be one that you would want to do in practice. That would be one that you would want to do 
uh, uh, want to refer. So keep, keep those in mind. Okay, uh, another, another good question that we had a lot of. Uh, no, you can't tell tissue is benign without submitting for histopath. So should, so anything you remove should be submitted, question mark. What should the course of action be for, for this patient? So uh, another great quest, question that um, requires a bit of an explanation for an answer. When we are, when we're looking at gingival hyperplasia, Gingival hyperplasia and epulids, or now they are called peripheral odontogenic fibromas, are very similar in some cases visually. Histopath that you are looking for when, when you excise in these cases and submit for pathology is not really either one of those. It's more to find out if one, if one or multiple areas that are more angry looking than the rest might be something else. And the reason I say that is the gingival hyperplasia will come back and so it is going to require some maintenance. Uh, we can go in, we can take radiographs, we can extract teeth that are uh, periodontally affected significant enough to warrant extraction and then close that tissue and that area is is more than likely not going to ever have any any additional hyperplastic tissue because it's not adjacent to a tooth on the other side of that is the uh the epulis and that being said with the with the fact that we're gonna have to come back on these hyperplasia cases uh, you can assume that if you've got multiple lesions like that, that most of them are going to be hyper, hyperplasia, but you could have an epulis or two in there as well. But we have to ask ourselves, unless it's a really encompassing lesion and it's going to grow quickly um, or, or otherwise cause problems, then uh, we, we don't care. Uh, for the most part because we're going to be coming in there and we're going to be doing six to 18 months generally uh, excisions with our in our case our 12 fluted burb we're just going to go in there every six to 18 months depending on the patient and how fast that grows back and just recontour we're, we're not really having to go in hopefully and, and re-excise with a scalpel because we're trying to trying to maintain those from now on so that epulis or that peripheral odontogenic fibroma or POF acts in much the same way almost all the time is it's not going to grow back with vengeance it's going to grow back at a, at a rate probably similar to the hyperplasia so knowing that those don't do anything else but knowing that they're very similar histopathologically with gingival hyperplasia now we didn't always know that but we have we have recognized that in the last couple years that we can treat them kind of the same way. If we have uh, an epulis or a POF versus hyperplasia, we evaluate the periodontal tissue, we extract, and then we contour uh, just like we would in, if it were hyperplasia. So I hope that, I hope that um, straightens that out for everybody. Also, if any, let, let's say for example, you do have a, a POF, that is acting more aggressively than the rest of the hyperplasia, then you may want to go back and biopsy uh, to confirm if you didn't biopsy originally. And if that is uh, historically coming back quicker, then the treatment for that is to extract the tooth with the actual mass. So, uh, so the tooth is, or, or the mass is derived from the periodontal ligament cells that surround the tooth if it's a POF or an epulis. So extracting the tooth and making sure that the alveolus is clean or taking in our cases as a uh, as a specialist we would take in some cases an end block resection of that. Um, I, I would not recommend that you guys do those end block resections. In that case uh, again to clarify that case 
unless you're really skilled, that should be a referral for removal of that mass, unless you're really comfortable. And that's why I took another tooth adjacent to it, because that tooth itself would have required a real narrow base flap and a lot of dissection that would make it prone to dehiss. So by taking a wider base flap, then what you're doing is you're ensuring that you don't have as much tension and that you're going to be able to close that. So again, I don't recommend that you do those. I recommend that unless you're really versed, uh, don't do end block resections. If you've got a small gingival mass that you can excise, you can take the tooth and you can close it without removing a lot of tissue like we did on that, on that one case, then by all means go ahead and do that. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request an invitation at ivdi.org slash inv.